Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to your daily five. And thank you, Stock Charts, for inviting me back. So I thought it would be fun today to do something a little bit different other than price charts. And we're going to look at a quick history of Fibonacci ratios and where they came from. So we normally have 10 minutes to present five charts, but because we're doing Fibonacci ratios today, I'm going to use eight <laughs> charts, if that's in the Fibonacci sequence, and try to do it in 10 minutes. So let's get started. So Fibonacci is a name, but it was not the name that Leonardo de Pisa, who is credited with discovering the Fibonacci sequence, ever used in his lifetime. His father's name was Bonacci, and it's thought that that's where Fibonacci came from. But who actually gave him that nickname is a little bit unclear. So you can see here that in 1838, one of the historians is credited with giving him the name Phileas Bonacci, son of Bonacci. But then 1506, it's also thought that maybe the name was given to him, Leonardo Fibonacci. <clears throat> And then we go up to the 19th century and Edward <clears throat> Lucas, the mathematician, is also credited with nicknaming Fibonacci. So it is a little bit unclear, but what is known is that in Fibonacci's lifetime, Leonardo de Pisa, he never went by that name or was given the name. And he was a brilliant mathematician, and he started studying accounting at his father's urgence when he was very, very young. He published a book, Liber Bocci, and received an award equivalent to the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, it's called the Book of Calculations. It was the first European work on Indian and Arabian mathematics. And what was really special about that book, one of the things is that he brought to us the system of using nine numerals versus Roman numerals. And that was a huge breakthrough in mathematics. It's also thought that he, um, for the royal family, solved the problem of how many rabbits would be produced in one year's time, starting with two rabbits. And that brings us to the Fibonacci sequence. So if you're not familiar with the sequence, it's actually fairly simple. And it's just a matter of taking one number and adding them together. So you have um, zero plus one equals one, one plus one equals two, two plus one equals three, and so on, all the way into infinity. So if you have nothing to do on a rainy day, you might sit down and see how far you could go on the sequence. But you can see just in this short illustration here how far up you can get into these numbers. Now, where we get what's referred to as the golden mean, the golden ratio, is once you get past the eight sequence, if you divide the smaller number into the larger, you get 0.618. If you divide the larger into the smaller number, you get 1.618. So I've just highlighted two numbers here that you can do, with, do that with and see that you do come out with these ratios. Now these ratios are related to the proportion and actually Pythagoras back in somewhere around 570, 495 BC was considered to be the father of modern geometry. And he and his wife Theano had a school that they ran and Theano is probably uh, one of the stronger forces behind that school, but they studied everything and they believed that everything um, you know, numbers or proportion were harmonic and that everything was related through mathematics. And that proportion and harmony is linked throughout history to what is referred to as the golden mean. But they were limited in proving their theories because the mathematical system that they needed to prove it was not invented yet. And that is what Leonardo de Pisa brought to us. 
And interesting, Pythagoras' wife, Theano, she led an inner circle, and these mathematicians studied everything, and she's credited with writing a treatise on the principle of the golden mean. And it's also thought that Pythagoras may have discovered the golden ratio through music and sound creating a harmonic pitch. Now, we'll go up to 300 BC, and Euclid, he is the first to express the golden mean as a mathematical ratio. And here's an example of that, where AB represents the whole. The ratio of AB to AC will be the same as the ratio of AC to CB. Now, all we have to do really is look at these proportions here where they're sectioned off, because we're going to show you some interesting things with this. So here's how we can section this. And I'll show you this on some examples in just a minute. But here, we can use Fibonacci ratios as a very strong tool in technical analysis. This is just an illustration. These are the Fibonacci ratios that I use. And some of these square roots are very important. This last chance Fib retracement, this is square root of 0.786. This is the last chance for a market to make that retracement and turn down or up. Generally, it close above that and the market will see a move to the 1.0 or higher to the 1.27, which is a little gem. It's the square root of 1.618. Now, these pink lines here represent the 0.707 ratio between the 618 and 786 and the reciprocal of 1.414 between the 127 and 1618. Now, Leonardo da Vinci lived at the same time as Luca Pacioli, who wrote the divine proportion and described these numbers and proportions. And he taught Leonardo da Vinci about these proportions. So let's look at an example of his famous painting. This is the most famous religious painting in the world, The Last Supper. And remember those sections that I just showed you. Well, let's take a look at those in this painting. So you have the ratio AB represents the whole, and the ratio of AB to AC will be the same as the ratio of AC to CB. So we can clearly see that those ratios are present in this beautiful painting. Now, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Leonardo, I'm on the wrong Leonardo, Leonardo da Pisa, he was known to be quite a traveler and loved to travel. And it was thought that he studied uh, mathematics in Egypt and that he studied the, the Great Pyramid of Giza at that time. And Fibonacci ratios have been attributed to the structure of this. So let's just take a look at sectioning uh, some of this off here and keeping in mind those proportions that we just looked at. Hope we don't knock those people over. There we go. And again, there is our propor proportion on the Great Pyramids of Giza. Now music, oops, a couple more letters to come up there. There we go. And music also, um, also uh, contains Fibonacci ratios either intentionally or not intentionally. Um, you can read through this, of course, in our limited time. I can't get to everything. But violins often are designed with Fibonacci ratios. And once again, there are those proportions. And the music themselves, the musical scales, 13 notes separate each octave of eight notes in a scale of which the fifth and third notes create the basic foundation of all the chords and are based on whole tone, which is two steps from the root tone. That is the first note of the scale. And there, there you have it. There's the first part of the Fibonacci sequence. So I will leave it to you to read the rest of this. It's all very interesting. And then finally, we come to in the up in the 1900s, George Bear, he was a trader who came to the US in the early 1900s. Not a lot is known about him, but he did have some sort of market newsletter and he was successful in predicting price levels and market movements. 
But however, he delivered his trading theories through code, and he relied on study of ancient writings and was the first trader, we think, to bring the Fibonacci sequence to traders, although he did it in a very puzzling manner. And here is an excerpt from his book, The Egg of Columbus, or the hidden movements in stocks and commodities. Now, the best that I can decipher this, and please let me know if you come up with something. He has a fish here. I'm not sure what this is. Not sure what this is. This looks like maybe drums with drumsticks, a toilet, and I think this is a gold pan. So I can maybe decipher this as a fish flying. So there's the start of an up move. Not sure what that is. Not sure what that is. This looks like drum roll, please, before the start of a down move. And here's a toilet, which that sort of goes with a big severe down move, and then maybe a gold pan at the lows for panning for gold. So there you have it. There's our quick history of Fibonacci levels. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you soon on another Daily Five. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.